Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about dealing with highly technical managers. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you deal with a highly technical manager who wants the code to be written in the way that they think is the best? Well, um, this is a treat uh, because that would be pretty close on to how it would be to work with me uh, and I but I suspect that this has less well I'd like to think that uh, I don't well I'm sure at least that one person feels uh, that this has been the sort of problem that I think that you are hinting to because I've had this problem as well where and some people have indicated that as well where if you go with a negative interpretation of uh, what y you're touching on here it basically is the case that you're dealing with a technical manager who has a very very specific idea of how you write everything you do basically micromanaging you to a point where it might be difficult for you to deal with that situation or that they have a very specific taste in certain things and so forth and so forth and I'd like to think that when at least the developers that I work with because I've only had one or two people that I've had this issue with and I'll touch on and sort of <laughs> make my case why they, that has happened uh, but on average I think that if you work with the technical manager it's very similar to how it is to work with someone who is just another developer you should treat it that way this is how I have done it uh, at the very least uh, so let me sort of explain the cases. So when I've worked with a technical manager who has a very strong opinion on writing code in a specific way, it's really just a question of, it, you can treat that situation as basically the same situation as if you had a coworker who has the same sort of ideas, right? And so what I try to tell software developers is that they have to remember that the code is not theirs. The Your ideas are... It, Think of it as any other profession, guys. Uh, if you were to work at McDonald's or you were to work in, as a construction worker, it doesn't really matter where it would be, right? If you have ideas that you present towards your manager, do you expect that they will just let you do that in any other job? I don't know of any other profession where, or rather, there are probably those, but it's very it's not a given that someone's going to hear you out just because you have an idea you see that you have that freedom as a software developer mostly because most of the time people don't know what you're doing and you have you want to have creative freedom but if you ask a designer the same question they will have the same answer, I think, at the very least the ones that I've talked to, where, sure, you have this period where you go and experiment and you do your own thing, but if, you're, if your boss or your customer has a different idea, you sort of have to just comply with that. And that's what I've done. Basically, you make a draft, you make a suggestion of what you think is a good idea, and then if they tell you that, no, this is not a good idea, then you ask them, can you please elaborate on how to do this thing? And so... Uh, and I would know when I have dealt with software developers. Uh, let me give you some context of this, uh, guys. Just because you have an idea doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best one. That's the other interpretation of this. Where, if uh, if you work with me as an example, most of the times, at least recently, where I've been assigned a team, it has had to do with the fact that they have not been performing where very well or the things haven't been going as well as management wants it to, uh, to go. And usually when that happens, they need to bring in someone who can sort of structure things. The problem is usually that you can't really find someone who can do that because you need someone who has the technical skills to give technical guidance at the code level, but you also need someone who can do it in a nice and sociable manner, not just, of course, tech, but, you know, processes, setting up pipelines, setting up work processes, all this sort of stuff, right? Because the software development process is not just code, it's all the way up to deliveries and how you do, like, uh, your 
planning sessions and all of this good stuff, right? And I've dealt with software developers who have their own way of doing things where it's great that they have ideas and suggestions for how to do things, but it has not been giving those end results. And a few times I've had developers who have done this thing, and I mean, it doesn't work for them. They just get fired, which is what happened where I give them suggestions and I usually have this uh, like there are specific areas that I will give them suggestions like I was tell them that some stuff you can do uh, however you want it's fine if you do this and this and this and so forth but there are a few technical things that we need to change an example would be this I remember this one guy I said I, uh, because I'm not going to go and tell you exactly you have to do it my way I'll just tell them what the requirements are because I work on a gate ba gateway based uh, uh, approach where I'll tell him that you should write unit tests for your code. And he couldn't. He could not efficiently do that. He's never had to do it and that's fine because then the second thing is that I will tell him that, you know, and make that very clear. I can show you how to do this. I can help you with this. And this is the key moment for you as a software developer. Either you accept that help and try to grow with me because my goal is not to force you to do things my way. My fo goal is to get the results that we need within the system. This person, individual, had a really tough time with that, didn't want to collaborate, didn't want to work with me and so forth and so forth. So basically what happens is this really, really sad thing that you will see happen sometimes, guys, where two coworkers sit in endless pull requests a code reviews. I think the longest time it took, uh, it took uh, he didn't even finish it because he got fired way before then. Uh, we had a bouncing story that bounced for over a month because I could not get this person to sit down with me and just have a pair coding sessions where I shared my thoughts and he shared his thoughts and we sort of started collaborating on how to take the, the best approach because it's not like I forced him to do things in a specific way. I said, I just need this unit test and he kept on failing writing them. And I said, well, this is not really good. We should do this and I could just come up with new things that had a problem. And so, of course, he gets annoyed instead of trying to grow and goes to my manager. And the problem is in this scenario that my manager was aware of the issues that we were having. And so my suggestion to you is to try to learn from this situation. If it is the thing that I suspect it might be where either you deal with the manager who has like a really like where it's sort of like silly to the point where they're really micromanaging you or it is the case that this is an opportunity for you to learn. I think that both are true, even if you're, regardless of if you're dealing with someone like me who is trying to coach you into a different way, uh, or if it's the case that you have someone who really, really wants to micromanage, me, uh, micromanage you, because all you really have to do is to s sort of say, all right, there is some person here now who wants me to do things in a very specific way. Let's see if I can figure out their point of view and learn from what they have to say. So what I want you to take away from this is that it can suck really bad if you're dealing with a manager who is like very, very into like, because I've worked with those guys as well, guys, is where like, well, they will get angry with you or like they will get hostile if they don't like the code that they are, that you're writing. And that is a sort of different problem because the lessons that they might have to learn to teach or like the way they want to do things uh, and so forth might be worth hearing out. Sometimes they're not going to have a better idea. And sometimes, as I said, you're sort of dealing with an individual who might not be you know, you're not benefiting from this. It's just that they have a very specific idea they want how they want to do things. And I can imagine that there are many people out in the world who just go, yeah, some of my customers or some people that I work with, they want something very particular to be happy. And even if I think it's bullshit, I'll just, you know, do it. I, I leave my body, I go to my happy place and I do it their way because at the end of the day, they are the ones who are paying for this service that you're providing or this thing that you're doing, right? It's the same thing with you, so with us as software developers. But on the off chance that you're working more with someone who is similar to myself, where uh, it, I might have specific things, like when we talk about architecture, for example, I have ideas on you should write tests as an example. example. If you don't want to write tests, that's probably not uh, like me, ma uh, that situation, I'm not really trying to micromanage you. I'm trying to make sure that the code get, gets to a certain state. It's the same thing when I expect you to do some basic regression testing before you ship or so forth and so forth. If you're not doing these things, 
uh, that's m more likely the case that you have some flaws in your own work process and if you take the time to get to know the people who are trying to like tell you how to do things it might be a way for you to open up your eyes to working in a different way that maybe it seems weird to start off with but it might actually be bring get great results and I suggest that you have that and I try to at the very least I try to have that piece of honesty with me at all times where I try to understand that some things I'm gonna be like yeah I don't want to do this and so forth and so forth but it might be good for me similar to like yeah it's like kids having to eat their vegetables it's not always fun to be told that yeah someone knows a better way or like this is not the right way to do things but I think that you would be worse off if you don't at least try first to see what this what, what type of lessons you can derive from it before you assume that the other person is just trying to be an asshole to you have a great day